exam is over, let us try to finish off chapter 11 and move to chapter 12. So this video will try to just finish off with chapter 11. Um, so lemma. Suppose f is differentiable. Suppose f is differentiable and f prime is increasing. Okay, on whatever the domain is or interval restricted, whatever. All right. If I have that a is smaller than b and that f of a is equal to f of b, then f of x is smaller than f of a is equal to f of b for every x between a and b. Okay, proof. The idea is going to be this. Well, f prime increasing means that my function is concave, and if I have a concave, uh, concave up, or so that is called convex, I think. Yeah, so it is convex, in which case, uh, if I have f of a is equal to f of b, every point in between has to lie below it. So suppose, suppose f of x is greater than or equal to f of a is equal to f of b for some x for some x in a to b, right? Then there is a maxima in a to b, then, then there exists x naught between a b such that f of x is maximum at a to b, such that f of x naught is greater than or equal to uh, f of a, a, a uh, and f of and x naught and f prime of x is equal to f prime of x naught is equal to zero. So then we have this. Well, let me just say that x naught is the maximum of f in a b. Okay, uh, in a b. On the other hand, if I use mean value theorem on a to x naught using mean value theorem on a comma x naught, I get there exists x1 such that f prime of x1 is equal to f of x naught minus f of a over x naught minus a, right? Well, x naught is bigger than a, f of x naught is greater than, uh, f of x naught is greater than f of a, so this is equal to zero, right? Well, that contradicts contradicting f prime is increasing, is increasing. Well, because I found a x1 bit inside a to x0, so it is uh, less than a and x0, and f prime is positive here, and then it is zero at x0. So that is a contradiction, and therefore such a x, uh, x should not have been possible for which f of x is greater than or equal to f of a. Okay? Then, theorem 2. If f is differentiable and f prime is increasing, then f is convex. If f is differentiable and f 
prime is increasing, then f is convex. Okay. This is what we should expect since every point in between a and b, we saw it lies below. But now we no longer have the condition that a is equal to b. The idea should still be the same. Proof. Let a be smaller than b. Define g by g of x is equal to f of x minus f of b minus f of a over g of b minus g of a times x minus a. Okay. Now, if you compute g prime of x is equal to f prime of x multiplied by, well, this, con uh, sorry, minus whatever this constant, so f of b minus f of a over g of b minus g of a times 1. Therefore, g prime of x is also increasing, right? Because it is just f prime of x shifted by a constant. Also, moreover, uh, also, g of a is equal to g of b is equal to f of a okay so even though a, a f of a was not equal to f of b g of a is equal to g of b therefore therefore by lemma let me just erase these by lemma E M M A. Uh, I have that G of X is strictly smaller than F of A for every X in A to B. Right? Because G of A is equal to G of B and G of X is smaller than F of A. Therefore, in other words, in other words, if x, uh, if a is smaller than x, smaller than b, then f of x, then f of x minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a is smaller than f of a, which implies, therefore, f of x, oops, I missed a term here. Times x minus a is smaller than f of a, and therefore rearranging terms, I get f of x minus f of a over x minus a is smaller than f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Okay, well, and that is my definition of the function being convex. Therefore, f is convex. Okay, that concludes my theorem 2. Then, theorem 3. Theorem 3. If f is differentiable and, G, uh, and the graph of f, if f is differentiable and the graph I'm working again probably in five minutes and the graph of f lies above the above uh, Okay, f uh, and the graph of f lies above each tangent line, each tangent line, except at the point of contact, except at 
the point of contact then f is convex then f is convex well we saw it exactly the other way around before we saw that if f was convex then uh, the graph lies above the graph of tangent line everywhere now we are trying to say the other way around so consider uh, again that let a be smaller than b now let us draw an image of um, a function so consider two points um a comma f of a and b comma f of b so let me call this point a this point is b okay so i am going to draw this is my tangent line at a maybe this is my tangent line at b and so this is my secant line the graph should maybe look like this something like that okay so the secant line lies above both the tangent lines so suppose um if a comma f of a lies above the tangent line tangent line at b uh, b comma f of b and b comma f of b lies above the tangent line at a comma f of a right then the slope of the tangent line at then the slope of the tangent line at b must be greater than the slope of the tangent line at a then the slope of the tangent line at b must oops at b must the must be bigger must be bigger than the slope of the tangent line of the tangent line at a comma f of a a comma f of a right and that I, more or less that is saying that oh a, a my slope is increasing as i move ahead okay um let us try to prove that more likely this is the more this is the entire picture this exactly is the idea of the proof i want to show that if i make my uh, as i take b greater than a my f prime at b should be greater than f prime of a which would mean by previous lemma oh, sorry by previous theorem that since f prime is increasing i have that my function is convex okay um let us prove this slightly rigorously uh the tangent line of the graph uh has function let g of x is equal to uh tangent well is equal to f prime of a times x minus a plus f of a b tangent line the tangent line at a a comma f of a uh since b comma f of b lies above it since b comma f of b lies above g of x uh we have we have f of b has to be greater than the value at b f prime of b times b minus a plus f of a and therefore um
Okay, uh, and and since okay, let let me say this this. Similarly, similarly, um, because let h of x. Uh, let similarly. Ugh, let h of x is equal to f prime of b times x minus a plus f of b be the tangent line at b be the tangent line at b comma f of b then since f of a lies above it i get f of a is greater than f prime of b that should have been f prime of a not b f prime of a times b minus a plus f of a f prime of b times a minus b plus f of b okay and now if i rearrange terms i get therefore uh, from the first one i get um f of b minus f of a over b minus a is greater than f prime of a and from the second one i get this is smaller than f prime of b by rearranging terms and therefore therefore f prime is increasing and therefore f is convex as we required right we have shown that the uh, first derivative is increasing we have assumed that f is differentiable in our statement and that implies that my entire function is convex let us do the last theorem theorem 4 theorem 4 if f is differentiable on an interval if f is differentiable on an interval interval and uh, intersects each of the tangent line just once and intersects each of the tangent lines lines just once then f is either concave or convex on the interval then f is either convex or concave on the interval on that interval okay so this theorem is different than all the other theorems we said so far uh, each of those theorems were about just concave and if I, uh, sorry convex and if I flipped everything it became the theorem for con uh, concave functions right here it says about both it, it can't really distinguish if it is concave or convex but it can say one of the two is going to be true okay so there are two parts of the proof first um, we claim that no straight line can intersect uh, the graph three times. Okay, so suppose uh, a straight line, a straight line intersects on the graph, the graph. Um, three different times at a b and c okay uh, then well the slope at these things should be the same right f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to f of c minus f of b over c minus b now just keep in mind when i say uh, a straight line cannot intersect you might be thinking hey but i just said that every tangent line shouldn't intersect once how can it intersect three times 
Yes, the our assumption is for tangent lines. We are now saying it for any lines. We are saying that no line can intersect it twice. Okay, not just tangent line, any line. You can of course draw a secant between two points, right? This also says that any secant can't intersect it another a, a third time. Okay, so I get that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to f of c minus f of a over c minus a. Okay, so consider the function, consider g of x is equal to f of x minus f of a over x minus a, right? Then g of b is equal to g of c on b to c. Then g of b is equal to g of c. And therefore, by Rolle's theorem, by Rolle's theorem, well, once again, this function is well-defined, differentiable, all these things, because x minus a is uh, 0 only at a, which is not in the interval b to c, and f of x minus f of a behaves nicely, right? By Rolle's theorem, there exists x in b to c, such that uh, g prime of x is equal to 0, which means, therefore, well, g prime of x here is the derivative, therefore, 0 is equal to x minus a times, well, let me call this x1, maybe, x1, then 0 is equal to x, um, 0 is equal to, uh, okay, just let's just call it x. x minus a times f prime of x minus f of x minus f of a. Okay, which is to say, oh, the derivative is 0. Well, the derivative is exactly f of x minus f of a, or, um, or like the derivative of this function g of x is exactly f of x minus f of a over uh, times that. Okay, this is literally the derivative of um, g of x. Uh, actually, this is all over x minus a squared, but uh, x minus a squared is a, okay, let me just write it as x minus a squared. And therefore, f prime of x is equal to, well, x minus a squared, cannot be zero or undefined, that doesn't matter. f prime of x is equal to f of x minus f of a over x minus a at this point. Well, and that is a problem because this means that the tangent line at x passes through the point a. Therefore, tangent line at x is equal to secant secant line between x and a x and a contradicting contradicting that each tangent line tangent line intersects the graph exactly once intersects the graph exactly once okay so that's part one now part two says that suppose i have such that suppose i have a not smaller than b not smaller than c not and a1 smaller than b1 smaller than c1 are some points in the interval, okay, uh, are between my given interval i, whatever interval i took, right? Uh, let, consider three functions, x t is equal to 1 minus t times a0 plus t times b0, yt is equal to 1 minus t times 
uh, a1 oops that should have been a a1 this is times a1 yt is equal to b naught plus t times b1 and zt is equal to 1 minus t times c naught plus t times c1 right then i have that uh basically xt yt zt are lines joining um x mm, a not then well let me say this then x0 is equal to a naught and x1 is equal to a1 similarly y0 is equal to b naught y1 is equal to b1 z0 is equal to c naught and z1 is equal to c1 okay moreover moreover you can check that xt is smaller than yt is smaller than zt right because at every point they should be above at the starting point they're above at the ending point they're above there are straight lines joining these two they should always lie above okay now consider consider g of t is equal to f of yt minus f of xt over yt minus xt minus f of zt minus f of xt over zt minus xt similar to what we considered before right this is very similar to that uh, by step one by step one g of t is not equal to zero for every t in zero comma one okay if g of t is zero then that means they have the same uh, uh secant line okay and it's touching uh, that means all these three points are collinear which can't happen with my graph right so that means so either g prime of t is greater than zero for every t for every t in zero comma one or g prime of t is less than zero for every t in zero comma one right and now that means therefore f if you look at the derivative of this you get therefore f is either convex either convex oops not g prime of t this should have been g of t my bad because we don't want to go for g prime g of t g of t well if g of t is greater than zero that means the derivative is increasing uh sorry the derivative is decreasing since yt is smaller than zt that would mean the derivative is decreasing if g of t is less than zero then g of t is increasing uh, sorry f prime is increasing and therefore it is either convex or f is concave throughout the interval okay and that ends our chapter so next we'll do chapter 12